Wow. Hello, 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 my lovelies. Chris or Sist here, and welcome back to the Cozy Book Nook, part two of the historian. First, before we get this episode started, shout out to my friend Allie. Uh, she helped film the intro that you so kindly saw not too long ago, and she recommended our next book for next week. Was not expecting that. Holy shit. I'm not gonna go as in depth this time because I'm thinking like last time it was way too long. So we're gonna do a shorter plot summary. Left off with Helen and Paul at the conference. Um, while there, Paul gives his speech, goes smashing. Um, he meets this other guy who has another book. Yada yada yada. Um, they go back to their. Paul and Helen both go back to their hotel rooms. It, their rooms were searched through. Um, you find out later that it was the librarian. <coughs> the librarian. In the hall with a candlestick. So, Paul. Uh, and Helen, after all that fiasco, uh, go to talk on like the almost the last day while they're there. Uh, they go to talk to Helen's mother, and Helen's mom basically tells how she met Ro Rossi, 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 how she met Rossi, how Helen was conceived, all that good jazz, and we find out Helen and the narrator are descendants of Vlad. Okay, so after they talk to Helen, they go back to Istanbul. They go back to Istanbul. They they meet up with Turgut. Turgut. And he found some stuff while they were gone. Uh, he found clues leading them to Bulgaria, where the, to the, the tomb might be there. He also reveals that he's a part of the Sultan's, like, secret team. He's part of an organization created by the Sultan, Mohammed II, uh, an organization to fight the Vlad and the Order of the Dragon. Helen and Paul go to Bulgaria. They meet uh, a guy named Anton, and he ends up helping them find the monastery that basically points them to the monastery that might be the tomb of Dracula. Uh, the monastery of Svete Georgi, if I'm pronouncing that right? Through a bunch of rigmarole, Paul and Helen discover where this monastery is. And when they get there, in the tomb, they find Rosie. Uh, I was hoping he survived. <laughs> but nope. They had to kill him by driving a silver stake through his heart, and I almost cried because I was kind of liking that character. But before he dies, he's like, yo, Dracula has a secret library and he's a scholar and he likes collecting books and people. Uh, Rosie then told him that, hey, I ha wrote down, I have a written account of everything. It's in the library. It tells all about his imprisonment. Oh, while they're on their way to the monastery, they're uh, followed by the librarian and a bunch of political officials. It kind of reminded me a little of like old school cartoons. Like, we are going to get moose and squirrel. They were following uh, Helen and Paul to the tomb because they wanted to find out that, where the tomb was and when they get there the tomb's empty. So after all this ordeal Paul and Helen move to the United States. Uh, they get married. They have baby narrator. A few months after Helen has the baby she gets super depressed. Basically was af afraid that the vampire bite would taint the baby. So because she's so depressed, uh, the family goes to Europe 
on a family vacation, trying to cheer her up, they visit another monastery, and while they are there, Helen feels Dracula's pull, and she tries to jump off a cliff. <laughs> she does survive, thank God, and because she landed on some grass and shit, she vows that she's gonna hunt Dracula down so she doesn't have to worry about him anymore. The vow of vengeance, like always. It feels like she has to hate somebody in order for her to move forward. She So, during all the reading of those letters, uh, Narrator and Barley are tr still traveling. They finally get there. Narrator finds her father. Did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Was there too much history? Was there too much... There's banter between them, yada yada yada. If you, that's a really good part, so that's what I'm trying not to spoil it. I'm trying not to do spoilers because I personally appreciated banter and all that good jazz. And Dracula is then killed by a silver bullet fired by Helen. That's main plot. And then in the epilogue, it, it jumps to like 2008, I think it was. Yeah, 2008. The narrator's in Philadelphia. She stops at the library with like a ton of notes on Dracula, yet uh, she accidentally leaves her notes behind and the attendant or librarian or somebody like comes out running with all her notes and a book with a dragon in the middle. So is Dracula dead? Is one of his minions taking his place? I don't know. I really wish it hadn't left it open like that. <laughs> that annoyed me. But yeah, that's a basic plot. I liked the book. I really did. It got a little slow in the middle, I'm not gonna lie. It was a little slow in the middle for me. But it was a pretty good paced book. I loved the mix between the three plot lines and how well they merged together. That that was really good writing on her part. I'm, I'm just still reeling from it. I, 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 I liked it. And I'm going to be going into withdrawals because it that it was a good book, and I hope the next book that I picked is gonna be just as good. I would totally recommend this to friends if I had any. But yeah, what did you think about the book? Like, did you enjoy it? Did you hate it? Was there too much history? Was there too much too much of like the same shit going on? Was it too slow? Was it too fast? Tell me what you think in the comments. I I would love to have a discussion with you about this. So please, in the comments below, talk to me. Um, my friend brought me to an awesome bookstore out in Troy. I absolutely loved it. I wanted to steal their couch because it looked out comfortable and beautiful. Um, and the people there were so nice. Uh, Market Block Books, it's in a nice part of Troy. It, like I said, the people were nice and I was happy to go there. So. Allie was kind enough to suggest our next book, and it is Donna Tartt's The Secret History. I asked my friend what it was about, and she's like, pretentious college kids and murder. So of course I'd like, sign me up. <laughs> this is going to be our next reading. There's 559 pages. Do you think we should do it all in one go? Hey, they gave me a free bookmark. Awesome. <laughs> Sorry, easily distracted. You know what? We're gonna go for it. We're gonna read this whole book in one week. If you have a copy and you read it before, pick it up, read it again with me. Uh, if you don't, you can get it from your library, go out and buy it. Do whatever works for you. Borrow it from a friend. I don't care. Just read it and talk to me. I'm so lonely. Uh, I'm gonna end this episode here. Uh... Don't forget to hit like and subscribe. And remember, stay shiny, guys. And keep an eye out for the next video. Ciao! Ryan, stop texting me when I'm recording. <laughs>